over a decade, the United States has had the capability to clearly record scenes such as these from polar orbiting photographic satellites. Here then is a historical look behind the scenes to show how this extremely complex camera in space evolved and an appreciation of the government industry team that made it work at a level of efficiency and reliability seldom, if ever, equaled in the annals of space technology. Three, two, one, zero. Its name, Hexagon. In 1966, the Hexagon program had reached the formal competition stage, and both the CIA and the Air Force established program offices. The contractor team finally selected consisted of the Perkin Elmer Corporation, which would develop the prime sensor or dual camera payloads. Lockheed Missile and Space Company would build the basic structure for the entire satellite vehicle and would also serve as final test and integration contractor for the satellite basic assembly. McDonnell Douglas Astronautics Company to design and build the large re-entry vehicles used to return the exposed film loads from orbit. General Electric, who would build the Mark V re-entry vehicles in which film from the iTech mapping camera system would be returned separately from space. The iTech Company, to be responsible for manufacturing, testing, and operating the precision mapping camera system for accurate positioning data. The Eastman Kodak Company, to produce and process the various ultra-thin base black and white and color films for both the prime stereo cameras and the mapping camera system. The Martin Marietta Corporation would provide the liquid-fueled Titan 3D launch vehicles and the United Technology Corporation would furnish the solid rocket motors needed to launch the 10-foot diameter hexagon satellite vehicle. And TRW Systems would write the T-Unity software programs that would be needed to control the many satellite orbital functions and operations. The development of the hexagon system was an ambitious program requiring the solving of many formidable engineering problems. The entire launch vehicle would weigh nearly a million and a half pounds and stand 160 feet tall. The satellite vehicle would consist of three sections. The aft section housing the control systems, electrical distribution and power, and the telemetry, tracking and command systems. The midsection containing the dual panoramic camera assembly, the film supply, pneumatics and electric supply and the forward section containing the four film recovery vehicles, the mapping camera, and its re-entry vehicle. The length of the film path from each supply assembly through each camera system and into the first recovery vehicle is almost 100 feet. Each supply assembly provides 150,000 feet of film to each camera at controlled constant velocities of up to 70 inches per second under specified tension. The looper assembly in each film path serves as the interface between the coarse and fine film transport systems and allows the total length of the film stored in it to be constant. This enables the fine film transport system to supply film at speeds up to the 200 inches per second required at the camera's focal plane. The dual camera assembly contains a pair of rotating panoramic cameras. One camera looks forward of the satellite vehicle and the other looks aft. Each camera has a 60 inch focal length and F3 folded optics. The optical system which contains both reflecting and refracting elements is mounted in a cylindrical housing called the optical bar. Light enters the aperture of the corrector plate is reflected off the folding flat onto the 24-inch primary mirror. The primary mirror focuses the light back through the field group mounted in the folding flat center hole and then onto the film focal plane. During photography, the optical bars rotate continuously through 360 degrees 
to provide cross-track scanning, but photography actually occurs only between 30 degrees and 120 degrees of each rotation. In each optical bar, a platen, which directs the film across the focal plane, is electronically locked to the optical bar through 130 degrees of scan. Each camera system contains active steerers and passive articulators to center the film on supporting rollers at critical points in the film path. Dual take-up assemblies in each of the four re-entry vehicles have a film capacity of one-fourth of the supply film load. Prior to Hexagon, no other satellite camera system had been called upon to transport very large quantities of ultra-thin base film at speeds of over 200 inches per second and be able to reverse direction both at the take-up and supply spools. Hexagon has more than lived up to the expectations set for it in the mid-1960s. Its panoramic cameras have recorded vast areas with the resolution necessary to fulfill its charter as our primary search and surveillance system. The panoramic stereoscopic eyes of Hexagon have indeed provided the eternal vigilance, which is still the price of liberty. For that accomplishment, we must thank the dedicated team of government and contractor people, the scientists, the engineers, the mission controllers, the image analysts, all working together to show once again the technological achievements that a free people can attain in the preservation of freedom. Hexagon, Sentinel of Liberty.